Now tuning in to Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Sincerely Queerly podcast. My name is Mel Signor. I'm Ezra Dodson, and we're gay and dating. So we started a podcast. We're going to talk about relationship stuff in our lives and being gay. Among other things, probably. Let's get into our first bit. <laughs> no, we're going. Let's organize it by bits. Let's organize it by bits, yeah. So, bit number one. Oh, don't trust me to count these. Bit number one, committing. Mel's gonna give us a Jonas Brothers song of the week. She says this is too heterosexual for the podcast. I disagree. Okay, I'm gonna make an argument against that because I was in love with Nick Jonas when I was, like, eight years old, and it was only because he looked like a lesbian. Wait, so you're making making an argument against something that you said? Yeah, I do this often. (laughs) Okay. That's what the whole podcast is going to be, is me arguing with myself. Okay. Yeah, the Jonas Brothers are, in fact, a gay topic because my attraction to Nick Jonas when I was young was because I was gay. I was just going to say that we're queering the Jonas Brothers. We're also queering the Jonas Brothers. Ten years too late, but oh well. <laughs> isn't that what, isn't this podcast ten years too late? I feel like everyone already has a podcast. It's true. Um, so yeah, Mel, what's our Jonas Brothers song of the week? I'm okay. excited. So I was looking through Jonas Brothers songs. I'm trying to find ones that are, like, relevant to stuff going on. Like, I don't want to just throw a random one out there, but I also don't want to be, like, burning up, because, like, everyone already knows. We're not knows. basic. Like, we gotta go for the underrated ones, right? Um, so my Jonas Brothers song of the week is World War Three. <laughs> okay, full disclosure, no idea that this was a Jonas Brothers song. Lines, Vines, and Trying Times. The best album! I was, like, six. I don't know. You were not six when that came out, because I was, like, ten or something. I was eight. That doesn't make me a person. It means ten- you should was, be listening to the Jonas Brothers. ten years ago. I don't know. I don't know what I ate for breakfast today. <sighs> so, my reasoning for World War Three, if it's not obvious. Um, you know, when you hear it when you're younger, you're like, World War Three. that's funny. There have only been two World Wars. <laughs> Is that what you think? That's what I thought. Okay. Maybe I was a weird child. <laughs> Just, oh, that's funny. Remember war? <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're like, World War Three. it's talking about this war that, like, hasn't actually happened. It's not real. Like, no one's expecting it to happen. And now it's 2018. This is a really deep... This podcast is Ooh. actually just a deep analysis of every Jonas Brothers song. Yeah, but... So, uh... The Trump administration is scary, and I am always waiting to wake up to news that World War Three has started. Deep. Um, and the Jonas Brothers predicted it. Can't start a World War Three if there's <laughs> only one top finding. Is you know, oh oh, that there's nothing left to learn. I'm sure. At Trump. <laughs> I'm sure that Jonas Brothers song was one about Donald Trump. Yes. <laughs> in the year 2008, and I'm also sure that it was about a real, the real imminent fear of a World War Three instead of probably just like a breakup or something. I don't know what that song about. The thing about. is, it was about a breakup, but it aged scarily well. <laughs> and now it's a song about politics in my mind. <laughs> Anyway, next bit. <laughs> I should stop talking. <laughs> Number two. I feel like... So, we know that no one's listening to this. We know it's just my mom. But I still think we should we, we should introduce ourselves. Right? Okay. No? I think they know everything they need to know about me, which is that I overanalyze Jonas Brothers songs, and I'm gay. <laughs> Mel, what, what else do we need to know about you? You're my girlfriend? I'm a sister's girlfriend. I'm Futch. She's important, <laughs> important identity topic. Mm-hmm. Um, You're gay. I think we covered that already. Lesbian. Uh, lesbian. Um, lesbian. Dogs are good. Not like Just dogs. a fact. Just a fact. Not even I about feel like, me. Should they know our pronouns? Oh yeah. I mean, that's good for a that gay wasn't podcast. a real question. <laughs> it sounded too much like. Should it be a mystery forever? <laughs> I'm just assuming everyone listening already knows us. Eh, I don't want to be misgendered in this cast. Yeah, Give not. your pronouns, Mel. My pronouns are she, her. Hi, I'm Ezra. I'm non-binary. My pronouns are they, them. And I'm bi. And I'm dating Mel. Oh, yeah. I guess I should mention that 
my identity. I'm cis. Mel's I'm, cis. I'm just, just cis. Yeah. Oh, also, thing that people who listen to this podcast should know about me, my body hates me. And I had a cold two weeks ago, and I still have a cough, which is why you're getting my sexy, raspy podcast voice. It doesn't sound that raspy. Sexy. <laughs> A little bit. I think I'm valid. You're valid. <laughs> it's okay. What is wrong with my body, Mel? I'm not a doctor. Mm. Doctor won't tell me either. Oh, no. Oh, so... <laughs> does that bring us to bit number three? Yeah, I think it does bring us to bit number three. <laughs> <laughs> bit number three is... So, Ezra and I... Yes. More so Ezra... No. ...has this thing. No. You started it. You completely, 100% started. was a started. joke! Ezra jokingly started talking in a baby voice. That makes it sound weirder than it is. Try to make it sound less weird. I started saying hello because it made Mel uncomfortable. And then I started doing it back because it annoyed them more when I did it. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to annoy them. Now we can't stop. By we, I mean me. Mostly Ezra. Oh, I need a burp. I, can I burp on the cast? No. <laughs> can't burp on the cast? I swallowed it. It's fine. <laughs> um, and I'm then, gross. And then the hoos like, developed into just baby voices for too many words <laughs> at random times. What? You mean like this and say we quail we pocket? Stop. <laughs> um, and now... We can't stop, and we decided collectively that we're not allowed to do it on the pod, but I feel like there should be a punishment. There should be a punishment. What's our punishment? I think we should have listeners send in punishments. Why are you just copying Hank and John Green now? Also, I like that you think we have enough listeners that we... I like that you think we trust our listeners to inflict pain upon us. Yes. Because I don't. Well, I don't have any ideas, and now we're on the spot. We'll figure out a punishment, but just know that we're going to hold ourselves accountable to not be annoying. Should we move on to our next bit? What's what's our next bit? Well, you never did your fun, quirky thing for the I pod. I don't know. Are, do we? Because you said it was dumb. I didn't. I never said it was dumb. Mel doesn't like. I didn't say I didn't like it. I'm just not convinced you're going to have a new one every prepared. time. But I wasn't prepared. Well, then we don't have to do it. Mm. If you want to do it, we can. You I'm tell not, me you don't know anything I'm about birds. I'm not prepared. Birds. The bit was going to be that Mel does a Jonas Brothers song of the week, and I have... We shouldn't call it of the week. We don't know. This podcast isn't happening weekly. <laughs> no. We're, you're getting, like, one or two episodes a month, first of all. We just want to, like, lay out that this is what... This is our standard that we're setting right now. One or two episodes a month. But in any case, Jonas Brothers Song of the Pod is a thing. And then I wanted to do a bird fact of the pod. Because I really like birds and I don't think they get enough love. I think they're overshadowed by the more common dogs, cats, and lizards. Are lizards in there? Yes. But then... Then I didn't... I didn't have a bird fact. I'm Googling bird facts. Mel talk. Ooh, you gotta give me something to talk about. Nope. I'm talk. not good at I'm not good talk. at this. This is why I do YouTube. Okay. Actually I just have a bone to pick with Google. I Google bird facts. First thing that comes up, fun bird facts for kids. First first bird fact. Birds have feathers, wings, lay eggs, and are warm blooded. Yes, this is a bird fact, but it's not a fun fact. It's like this is what a bird is. Well, it's it's fun if you don't know. Like you're you're one year old, you can't talk. They're not gonna And then you learn that. It's I feel like everything's one, fun the even first time you learn it. know what birds are. But they don't but they don't know all those details. Oh my god, this is a cute bird fact. Cute bird fact. We should have, like, like, like a sound effect. Like, cute bird fact. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hummingbirds lay the smallest eggs 
out of any bird species, but guess how small their eggs are? They're the size of a pea! That's so tiny! How big are they as, like, infants? I... I guess there are baby hummingbirds. That never occurred to me. so small! Wait, look at baby hummingbirds. (laughs) Just, like, the size of ants? So, obviously, this is an audio podcast, and I can do nothing to convey the smallness of these birds to you, so I'm just gonna have to say, Google image baby hummingbird, because Mel, holy shit. Look at them. Look at them. They're so small. That is a fingernail, and that is a baby hummingbird. That's so weird. Oh. I don't like how it looks. It's cute. Not in that picture. It It looks like a hairball. Mel, bird hater. (laughs) Exposed. Oh. <laughs> you just start everything with, oh. Oh. Because this... that's how thoughts enter my brain. It's like, silence, and then, oh. Um, I have to burp again. Oh. <laughs> it won't happen. I can't burp. Can I, I was just thinking about this a couple seconds ago. I feel like I should bring it up on the pod just to oh. establish. Oh, (laughs) just to establish, like, it's not discourse, but it should be. Okay. You've heard me complain about this before, but I just need to, like, lay it out and, like, get the information out there. YouTubers, or anyone who, like, is making someone else listen to them in any context, eating food while they're (laughs) talking. Mel has a big issue with this. I have a big issue, like, hearing people chew in general, like... Including me. Including everyone. Except people who chew, like, really quietly. I chew really quietly, but sometimes Mel will just, like... Sometimes she's not bothered by it, but then all of a sudden, like, we'll be eating one day, and she'll get really quiet and look really (laughs) mad at me, and I have to be like, baby, baby, do you hate me? What's wrong? (laughs) And she's like, nothing is fine. And I'm like, is it my chewing? And she's like, yeah. (laughs) And she's so mean, and she puts me through these mental I, gymnastics. I didn't... I don't try to look mad at you. I'm just, like, sitting there being, like, calm down. It's just a noise, but it just makes me so angry. You've literally said if I chewed any louder, you wouldn't date me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly joking. Mm, but don't believe you. But then there's, like, YouTubers who, like, have complete control over, like, when they film their videos, when they eat their meals, like, all this stuff. And they're like... I I'm gonna be quirky and eat a bowl of cereal while I talk about something, and I literally, like, have to click out of the video. It doesn't matter what it's about. It doesn't matter how much I like the YouTuber. I just can't. I just can't. So, yeah, we promise this is a chew-free podcast. It's not a water-drinking-free podcast, because as we established, I am husky. (laughs) Well, I just had that thought because I, like, went to drink my coffee, and I was like, oh, no, I have to, like, hold it away from the microphone because I don't want to be that person who, like, makes annoying noises. You can just sip sip. Can you? Is this a sip sip free podcast? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, you can drink. I know, but I'm scared that like that noise is going to be someone's oh, like chewing equivalent. Okay. Cool. And I don't want to cool. be that person. Well, we don't eat on this podcast. On You're So Brave, Chase and Aaron chew gum. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, not gum. They chew on like mints. Doesn't matter. And I don't like it. No, nope. we will never do that to you. I like You're So Brave as a podcast. I'm not trying to call anyone out. One of our topics is just, or wait, we're calling them bits. <laughs> we can't, it doesn't matter. Bit number. I don't fucking know. Probably like four or five. Um, Mel, Mel got gel nails. We got, we went and got manicures right before. Many petties. We got many petties. Uh, cause in order for Mel to go to prom with me, cause she's two years out of high school and I just graduated. In order for her to go to my senior prom, after she'd already been to one, she was like, hey, we're getting Manny Petties because I want to get Manny Petties. And I was like, you know, that's valid. So we went and we got Manny Petties and I am too insecure in my masculinity to get color on my nails. But because I don't wear flip flops, I got, I painted my toenails hot pink. Uh, They're more of like a magenta. I'm looking at my foot right now. We're sitting on my floor. Um, I just wanted context for how I'm, like, looking at my barefoot. Anyway, 
so I have first part of this very interesting story is that I have magenta toenails, which clash a lot with the fact that I have hairy squatch legs. Um, and then Mel got gel, a gel manicure for her little foot aesthetic, got little French tips. They look very cute. But we also discovered <laughs> they're so fun to peel off. Which I know is not good for your nails, but also, I it just feels good. It feels so good. So, right now, I have one hand where I haven't peeled off any of them, and it just looks nice. And then I have my right hand where three of my fingers no longer have any nail polish on it whatsoever. Nope. And then my thumb and my pinky <coughs> have the gel nails. Um, and it looks ridiculous, but also, it's so fun... And I have a problem. Mel, like, wouldn't let me peel one of them off for a while, and I almost started crying. I was like, please let me have this. It hurts a little bit when you peel it off. I don't care. Do you love me? <laughs> Do you even love me? Because if you loved me, you would let me peel off your my gel fear. Finger. I do love you, but my fear is that if you accidentally pulled off my entire nail, I wouldn't love you anymore. <laughs> Guys, this podcast is going to be the reason Mel and I break up. No, you peeling off my nail is going to be the reason. <laughs> it's like a form of torture. Um, I also just need need the world to know that we do have, because we were like, I don't know what we're going to talk about, clearly a lot. We did have a little list of, of our various bits <laughs> that we wanted to address. And for this particular segment, talking about uh, Mel's nails... I included a direct quote from her, which is, talk about your weird mantos. <laughs> Would you like to elaborate on my weird mantos? Actually, let's not do this, because I know that, like, there can't be an audio podcast equivalent to Wikifeet, but I just don't want to attract weird people. I have a policy in my life that I don't put my feet on the internet. I have a strict policy about this. No, I... I so... Uh... I think we should posting stop. pictures of your feet to get money in exchange is valid, and I would do it. Listen, all sex workers, valid. Yeah. Let's just put that stance right out. Here's the political <laughs> part. <laughs> Finally, we get to the political part of this podcast. Was my sex World workers, War III analysis not political Valid. Enough? People with foot fetishes. I'm gonna say it. Valid. <laughs> <laughs> However... I don't want, I don't, I'm not either of those things. Here, okay, here's and the deal. I just, I, if I'm gonna participate in some foot fetishness, <laughs> if I'm gonna participate in someone's foot fetish, one, they better pay me, and two, I don't really want that in my life, so I'm gonna remove my feet from the internet equation <laughs> so that they don't talk to okay, me. Okay, so here's the deal, listeners. <laughs> Listeners, <laughs> we need a when name. we when we talk about feet on this podcast. If it satisfies your foot fetish to listen to it, Don't. you have to send us no five dollars on PayPal. Oh, that's fine. I thought you were gonna say something very different. No, you just, don't even tell us why you're sending it. We'll get it. Don't worry. You don't need to tell us about how you felt listening to it. Just send us the five dollars, and then it's a fair exchange. <laughs> I don't feel like we should be soliciting foot fetishes <laughs> through this podcast. I'm not soliciting like it. That's a good idea. <laughs> but also, our PayPal is ezrissa at gmail.com, which is a combination of our names. Yeah, so for now, send us money on PayPal. Maybe eventually a Patreon? Whoa, Mel's doing a lot with her arms right now. <laughs> I don't even know how to dig ourselves out of this. How long have we been talking? 20 We dig minutes. ourselves out by... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Segway. Um, That's what our episode title should be. Just... Oh! Exclamation point. Yeah. I'm serious about that. I think we should make it that. That's good. That's a good name. Okay. okay welcome to uh, this episode of Sincerely Queerly. Oh! oh! <laughs> With the hand this motions. Is, 
they can't see it. We should be like Megan Tonjes and like film our podcasts. No, because then so we then have we... to look cute. Mel. Yeah, I'm. Because what? I'm in my pajamas. What time she is, is it? She it's smells 4 PM. awful. Stop. She, like, you haven't showered in 24 hours. Listen, Mel hasn't showered in 24 hours. I'm pretty sure it's been longer than that. In over 24 hours. Because I didn't shower last night. I know. She Listen, smells I was, bad. She's here's, in her pajamas. Here's, here's what happened. My hairy man feet are out. Here, Welcome to the pod. First of all, it's extremely warm in here, and I'm sweating. I But we can't open yeah, the windows. I know. I'm, or just, turn on I'm just setting up air. how gross our current state is. <laughs> Secondly, I want everyone to know that there is a reason that I am not dressed, and it is because we woke up at 8 a.m., <laughs> And I felt a little sick. I was a little dizzy. I was a little nauseous. And I was like, cool, I'm going to, like, take some Advil. I'm going to, like, eat some breakfast. Ezra was very nice and made me some cereal and brought it to me in bed. So fancy. I made you cereal. Yep. And then I still felt a little icky, and we both fell back asleep. Mel just curled up on me, and I was like, oh, this is cute. And then it was 12.30. We woke up at... I woke up at 12.30. You were still sleeping. And then it was like, oops. Because, like, I wake up early. Like, I'm not, like, a sleep in until, I mean, like, same. 12 p.m. I usually person. wake up earlier than... I've been waking up earlier than you, which is probably why I needed that. I should preface this by saying, if you're watching this way after this episode's aired. We don't know when that's going to happen, but I assume it's within... We want to air it for Pride Month, because maybe then more straight people will feel guilty and watch. Uh, Listen, not watch. Right, right. Um, (laughs) Oh no, we're not on YouTube. That's fine. It's... YouTube's been weird. Anyway... But, like, can I finish explaining why I'm disgusting right now? Sure, because I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I know you don't. I'm trying to save you. <laughs> so my plan for today was going to be we wake up, eat some breakfast, record this pod, and then work out. So I was like, I'm going to shower after I work out. So I didn't, you know, get ready for the day yet because I was waiting until I worked out. But I've continuously felt gross all day. Has Mel mentioned that she works out? <laughs> we should have put that in my about me section. I mean, it, I'm footch, so, like, gotta make myself more mask by doing the workout thing. A lot of hand mo- movements happening again. Yeah, it's mostly to, like, air out my armpits, which are really sweaty. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, all I was gonna preface this whole thing, whole nonsense was, was by saying, it's summer break for both of us. Yep. So, all of this is extremely valid yes um anyway i'm not usually gross i value showers very much Uh -uh. and i'm going to shower today nope it's because she's footch lesbians don't shower are you that's lesbophobic that's extremely rude lesbophobic such an ugly word like it's an ugly thing to be i always feel wrong when i'm saying it (laughs) it's an ugly it's an ugly thing to be but it's also an ugly word I think because it has, it, it just ends at lesbo. Yeah, it and I just have see it that with so much middle school. Yeah. Also, because I feel like the only people, the only times I hear people seriously claim specifically lesbophobia is TERFs. <laughs> yeah. It Political be- podcast. <laughs> it should be. I didn't dab. That's not what I did. It, I, it was like a celebratory hand. No one happening. can see you except me, and I already judge you, so it's mm, fine. I'm, I feel so vulnerable. By talking to your girlfriend and having people listen to it? Mm-hmm. That's fair. <laughs> um, oh, man. But, we already broke our, our non-controversial... Was this podcast going to be not controversial? Not the first episode. Oh, yeah. Oops. Oops. Um, well, if you're a turf and you're listening to this... Fuck you. <laughs> get out. <laughs> also, I think we swear on this podcast now. I've sworn, like, this entire time. I yeah, I hope we couldn't do this without fine. that. That's fine. We're not Whatever. going for... Sorry, Mom. Sorry, children. Who've definitely never heard a curse word. I'm definitely our youngest listener. And I am listening to this podcast right now as the words come out of my mouth. Listening live. Ooh. I'm 17. I'm a babe. 
I'm gonna buy you the. Please <laughs> stop doing that. <laughs> Is that also banned? Yes. Okay. Cool. Do we want to talk about the Hunger Games? I feel like we we should mention it. So Mel, why why would we be mentioning the Hunger Games? We decided to have a depressing Hunger Games marathon a couple days ago. That we just. Depressing because the movies are depressing. Yeah, and also because it's 2018 and we were having a Hunger Games marathon. But first of all, listen, I want to establish those movies are great. The books are great. I'm still a stan. Yeah. Okay. I want everyone to know that I don't want everyone to know what I'm going to say is that my second Tumblr was a very popular Hunger Games fandom blog. Tell us if you remember Sunset Orange Pita. Ooh, don't tell us. Tell us if you're if you're a longtime fan, if you've been following Mel since the beginning, if you're proud of how far she's There come. are people who I've known since that phase on Mel, Tumblr. we get it. You're famous. I know. I'm just, like, really <laughs> relevant from the Hunger Games era. That's all I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> no, but I, I love... I love the Hunger Games. Me they're too. good. They're relevant. They're they they've are. got good Watch messages. Watch those movies or read those books in 2018. It's wild. It's it's, it's scarier when Trump is president. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So we had um some some thoughts about it, and I was like, why don't we bring these thoughts to the pod? Because my live tweeting it was not enough they were some good tweets though. there were some except for really the good ones tweets. about personas okay first <laughs> of all you can't even judge me for writing persona based tweets about the hunger games when there is blatant furry bait in the last movie there's I no totally reason for that. tigers to exist but she does We've alienated our entire audience. No one remembers this character or has watched The Hunger Games in 2018. They're good. Rewatch them, guys. Anyway, there's blatant furry bait in the movie. Look it up. Look it up if you don't believe me. Um, but also, I was assigning Muppet personas to various characters. Can we talk about our good takes on the movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one thing you need to know about me. Uh, over the course of this podcast, I am not a furry. Oh my god! I, just I hate need... that we even are. No, this I need up. I need to put the disclaimer in so that people know that I. And now I know. we're now we're alienating our furry audience. Daniel, I don't want you to watch this podcast. <laughs> you can't watch a podcast. <laughs> god. Anyway, what were our well, good Daniel takes? Well, Daniel can't listen to this podcast either. Okay. Well, what were our good takes? What were our good takes? Um, I mean, they weren't good takes because they were about bad things happening, but they were yeah. relevant. We were just like, I don't know if we want to just do that, like, this whole 180 on the the current mood of the podcast. I feel like that's, that's what we are, is just flipping 180 moods all the time. Okay. Um, that's our thing. That'll be our brand. Okay. Be like, haha, furries. Anyway, let's talk about systematic oppression. <laughs> oh, I just realized how much the Hunger Games movies really deal with the fact that they are about war in a way that I completely forgot that they did. They did that. Like, if you watch some of the footage back, like, you're watching a movie and it's clear that it's a dystopian universe, but also there are, there are, Things that happen throughout um, the latter books and movies that literally mirror war crimes that the United States has, has committed, but also just the rubble and, like, the places they move through, you're like, oh, wow, they really did that. They really, they really did that. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I don't know, that was interesting to me because it really does grapple with the fact that it is about war in a way that you don't see as much from series that get, that are sort of put it alongside it, like... Divergent. Well... I'm a Divergent stan. I wasn't thinking about the Divergent series, because I like to forget. I was gonna say, like... Okay, first of all, let's establish that a Divergent series was good. No. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no. Um, it wasn't. It's bad. No. Uh, we can have a whole, we can have a whole other podcast 
talking. Let's episode two is us arguing our points about the. I can't because I barely remember any of it. Because it's bad. No, it was really good. I was gonna mention series that are paralleled with the Hunger Games, like Star Wars. Oh, okay. Like Harry Potter, like other. Big I was thinking like franchises. dystopian, like. No, I'm just thinking other fiction. yeah franchises that get dark, but like the Star Wars series has only recently started to like establish that it's actually about war. Yeah. And the Harry Potter series like don't even get me started, but the Hunger Games series actually does deal with that a lot, and I think the movies deal with it really well. And like it's the most realistic portrayal of. Yeah, society. I think, I think the last time I watched the movies and read the books, I felt partially because I was like twelve, and partially because. We... Well, you haven't read them since you were twelve. Yeah, I think the last time I read them. I, I mean, like I was I was younger than you. Um. Anyway, stop cutting me off. I'm sorry, I'm saying. and that's part of our brand. True, <laughs> we just cut each talking. other off all the time. But partially because I was really young, and partially because it was we were in a kind of different political climate, I really felt like those books were far away from my reality. Right. I also just wasn't, like, as aware. I don't think a lot of us were. Like, can we talk about the f- the the scenes with the Peacekeepers, one, being called Peacekeepers, and just... Destroying There everything? are just scenes of them, like, just absolutely... Just beating up people for protesting. They shoot a man for just, like, raising his hand when Katniss and Peeta come into District 11. Like, there is a lot, there are a lot of parallels between the peacekeepers and the state of the police in the United States. And I didn't realize that when I was a less woke yeah. <clears throat> child. Because when you're younger, but also liberal, you're like, yeah, racism exists stuff like that, and then, but you don't get the degree to which it exists? When you're a white child, I should yeah, say. Yeah, good, good addition. Yeah, we're both, we both have the perspective of, of being white people, yeah. so. Yeah. Tell but, us um, if we say anything wrong here. Yeah. Um, but we were also talking about how, like, the books especially, because the movies were whitewashed, but the yes. books were so progressive in terms of race- for, like, the YA fiction mm-hmm. genre. Yeah. I don't want to just, like, keep giving Susan Collins these, like, good ally cookies, but she does really have some takes on political issues in those books that are complex and kind of impressive that she was aware enough to slip them in in a way that I think actually went over a lot of readers' heads. Especially because a lot of readers were younger. Yeah. Like, she just, she wasn't afraid to do that, and she was clearly had a certain amount of awareness about issues. I don't know what she's doing now. I just what realized I was best like... best life, I hope? Because I know, like, like, J.K. Rowling has disappointed me, and I was like, I hope she hasn't disappointed me. But honestly, she's probably just vacationing somewhere with all of her money. I'm so glad that fine. she didn't do what J.K. Rowling did. <laughs> Like, where she was like, I'm uh, gonna keep putting out stuff and, like, wearing the story into the ground. Dumbledore was gay. You want to know one author? We're, this is just a YA fiction podcast now. You want to okay. know one childhood author who continued putting out content but hasn't disappointed me? Who? Rick Riordan. That man is good. I don't like to give credit to straight white men. Is However, he straight? I'm assuming someone's sexuality. Problematic. I'm pretty sure he's married to a woman. Okay. And he has never talked about his sexuality. But he is still writing books based on myth. Yeah. Yeah. There are a bunch of series. I stopped reading the series after a while. But, like, now his new series (laughs) has, like, first of all, he, if you read the first books, like the first Percy Jackson series, you're like, okay, it's a little white, it's a little straight. Next series, put some gay characters in, put more people of color in. And then they keep doing that over and over again. And then, now, the newest series, I think, I think it's the newest series, but there's a trans non-binary character in it. I'm good. I want to read those. Hell yeah. Me too. I'm like, he's, he's just like an old, I mean, not old, old, but like, 
Yeah, no not offense, young... Rick Riordan, who listens to the podcast. Yeah, uh, but he he's just so woke. Like, good on we him. We need to stop using the word woke, like on like in unironic terms of this podcast. Well, else, I hate it. What else? I'm not good at words. What else should I say? I don't he's know. he's aware. aware. He's he's good. and like he's always dealt with like disability in his books and stuff like that. True. And like. I just love him. I should actually read the books that I'm, I'm talking about. I'm actually feeling really, really jealous right now of all the affection that Rick Riordan is getting <laughs> from my girlfriend. Well, when you write a book Can't leave my girlfriend's with representation. Rick um, yeah. Anyway. This is a Rick Riordan I don't think it's wrong podcast. to, like, acknowledge when people do good things even if it's in the context of, well, everything else regularly disappoints me, so I'm gonna be real happy about this thing. Yeah, and he's done it in really, like, good, non-like, mm-hmm. self-praising ways, but just like, oh, this is a thing that, like, people yeah. are talking about now, and, yeah. like, that's how some people's identities are, and, like, the books have always tried to, like, shed light on mm-hmm. different identities. Yeah. It's cool! Because <laughs> plenty of authors try, plenty of authors who are privileged try to write about marginalized groups. Once again, J.K. Rowling <laughs> sure did create some some flimsy allegories for <laughs> oppression without putting in any characters who were gay or of color or disabled. Um, Dobby was trans. Stop. <laughs> oh my lord. Um, but... That's, I guess that's why when, like, Susan Collins isn't, like, writes a series with reflections of society in a dystopia that aren't, like, super edgy, um, don't feel completely removed from reality, and is able to write about the oppression of people of color without completely fictionalizing it, and actually ground, actually being, like, instead of writing about people of color through the lens of something, like, mythical, Mm -hmm. she just put people of color in her books and talked about the ways that they, even in really dire circumstances, are still oppressed in a way that their white counterparts aren't, Mm -hmm. is really interesting and something that I think we both, like, didn't really appreciate when we first read them. So yeah, we had a Hunger Games marathon, and it got, got real. Got real. Also, so sad. I know, we, we Everyone, couldn't even... It, it baffles my... Sorry, I'm just gonna cut you off No, again. that's how it works. It boggles my little mind that people got so caught up in the heterosexual love triangle of those movies that I feel wasn't even pushed as hard as just the marketing pushed it. That they uh, didn't... Mockingjay really pushed the Gale and Katniss thing. Yeah, I think so. More than the You're book. Right. The book didn't do that at all. True. The and I, it, were you lot. know, you know it was them trying to ride the coattails of Twilight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it just, it is baffling to me how, like, that's what they were able to, like, make people take away from those movies. And I mean... When they whitewash Katniss and take out some things that could have made those messages a lot more clear, it makes sense. But it's still like, how did you even pull this from these books that are, like, really good? Yeah. I'm sure there are problematic things about the Hunger Games that, like, were particularly the books, because we still, we did not go back and reread those that, like, were missing here. But, like, everything's problematic. Like, I'm yeah. not going to sit here and be like, like, discount my views on... Oh, no. Just I'm just I'm saying I don't want to be lifting up these books and then suddenly remember, like, <laughs> something really shitty that happened. So I'm just going to acknowledge that, like, I'm praising what is there. Yeah. And if there are bad things in it, I currently don't remember them. Because yeah. I don't remember the good things either until we watch the movies. Uh-huh. Movies are shitty for their own reasons. Hunger Games. Pretty good. This has just been a real stroll down memory lane. <laughs> Hunger Games, the Jonas Brothers. We're here to do some throwbacks. We're here to do some throwbacks. We're here to really just give some hot takes about pieces of media that no one has thought about in at least two years. 
we're queering the Jonas Brothers and the Hunger Games and birds. Okay. Are... I was about to say, are there birds that exhibit gay behavior? And then I remembered there are flamingos. I don't know if flamingos have gay sex. I'm just assuming that they do. I think most animals exhibit gay behaviors. Flamingos? True. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a science podcast. Clearly. I think we talked about it now. Yeah. Is This is a... We're at 46 minutes. I think we should... <laughs> It finally happened. No. I refuse to cut my burps out of this podcast. Well, then you're they are juicy and delicious. <laughs> you better cut that out. No. Thanks for listening. Hope you have a lovely and gay day. Sincerely Queerly is a production of Earbud Media. Our Twitter is squeerlypod. Our Instagram is sincerelyqueerly. And you can email us at sincerelyqueerlypod at gmail.com. Sincerely, Mel and Ezra. Fucking did it. Yes. First try. Woo! You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone.